All right, so let's now get into example two along our topic on uh, continuity of a function at a specific point. So this problem in example two that I'm, I'm about to introduce here is uh, quite popular among many textbooks out there and especially among those uh, commercial web programs that offer online homework, for example, WebAssign, MathML, or the, especially for students who are in the state of Washington, then the, about uh, seven to eight years ago, instructors in the state of Washington started using a lot of uh, a web program that's called YMAP.org. And so my bottom line here is that the problem came out from example two right here are quite common and, and especially popular among all the uh, web assign or uh, math ML or even WAMAP for here. So now since these problems are in the electronic version, so allow me to bring up my computer screen and we will be having a, a, directly, uh, a direct look at them. All right, so here's my computer screen right here. So go ahead and observe the wording here of the problem. But in the wording of the problem, the graph below is the function f of x. So here we have a graph. And now the, the, the particular web problem that I'm bringing up here is specifically from ymap.org here. But uh, like, like I'm saying, you can surely find a, a very similar problem right from WebAssign or you know, you know, sandgage.com or you know, MathML whatsoever. But the, this particular program I'm using that with YMAP has a feature that we can, I can zoom in the graph right here. So this is the graph for f of x. So have a good clear picture of that and you can even pause the video to, have, to take note of the picture of the graph. But now, once everybody have a good clear note of the graph, the question is asking us, determine which of the following rules for continuity. So remember, we in our earlier in this lecture, I talked about uh, being uh, being able to say that a function is continuous at, at a point. Then we need to satisfy the function needs to satisfy three rules. However, recall for yourself that when I was writing down those three specific requirements or rules for continuity at a point, then I, there there was a certain order of how those rules are being carried out. But here, the good thing and, and the, the part that I really uh, like about this kind of problem and, and, and I would like to bring it out as, as a, a, an example in class is that the author of the problem purposely shuffle the order of all these rules. So all you see here is simply just rules, rules, and rules. It is your responsibility to know which rules comes first, which rule comes next, and which rule is the last out of the, all the three rules right here. But the way how it's written or the way how these rules are written are quite uh, standard. And so simply just look at these rules and compare that with your notes that you've took, uh, taken earlier. But now back to the main goal of the problem, we want to determine the graph given here, which one of the rules for continuity being listed here is being violated. So violated means uh, it's not true. So is this rule not true or is this rule not true or is this rule not, uh, not true? for this function at the particular point x equals negative 1. So have a moment to clearly understand the, the goal, the purpose of this problem, and we are going to proceed. All right, so let's now proceed. And like I said, so maybe right now all these three rules are being written quite like the way how I was writing it down uh, on, on my lecture earlier, but uh, in other problem that I'm later on going to bring up, then these rules might be uh, shuffled in a different order. So, so now all we have to do in our responsibility in order to find a, to find a correct rule that violates here, then first of all, at x equals negative, negative 1. Now allow me to bring part of my other board up here. All right, so for the graph of f of x, let me find a way to bring up the graph here. All right, so for the graph of f of x, then the way how it looks, and for the way how it looks, then the way how it looks there, then f of negative 1 has a value. And you can see that back on your point right here, this solid 
dot on the piece of graph, even though the graph itself is a piecewise function, but when x equals negative 1, we do have a solid point. So that means f of negative 1 is defined. I don't even need to worry about what the, val the output value is, but now I can guarantee that f of negative 1 is defined. So that means uh, back in our understanding, let me put the graphs away, then the rule The rule here, rule num the first rule here, it looks like among the list here, f of a is defined, is not violated. So we don't want to choose that. Remember, what we're looking for is which rule for continuity is violated? Which rule is violated at x equals uh, negative 1? And so, so for now, among the three rules being indicated here, first rule is not indicated. So I am not going to choose that one as a multiple choice. And the, this problem in, 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 in particular on its own is designed as a multiple choice. And so let's look at the next rule over here and allow me again to bring up the two boards so that I can work out the solution a little bit. But now if we're looking at uh, the graph again, now if we're approaching this function, if we're attempting to take the limit of this function as x getting close to the limit point negative 1 from the left hand side, then with your experience with limits at this point right here, anyone reading the graph should be able to estimate that this limit from the left hand side of negative 1 is going to give limit negative 2. And uh, same function, but now if we're finding the limit of this same function as by letting x coming close to negative 1, our limit point, but from the right hand side, then this function comes to limits equals uh, negative 3. And so that means, uh, generally speaking, from two sides, then this function has uh, the limit of this function, f of x, for x coming close to negative 1, generally from both sides. Uh, is a non-existing limit or our common kind of, our popular kind of answer, popular kind of expression here is uh, DNE. Sorry about the interference. But, uh, and so in that way, now that tells us that Back in our, and let me put the map away, let, let me put the graph away, and uh, completely stay on the graph right here. Then, this requirement here fails, limit of the function here when x comes to a for this particular problem, for this, for, for this particular graph right here, the limit here limit f of x exists, but this is a violation because it didn't, it did not exist. We proven earlier, we have proven earlier that it's, it's uh, not a non-existent limit. But now before I choose, before I make my answer choice, think about it. The consequence of having this is that if we fail having a limit, then of course this requirement is that back in my uh, definition of continuity, I call this is rule number three right here for continuity. This rule number three of, for continuity also fails. So meaning, for this kind of graph right here, for this kind of graph, then we have rules two and rules number two and rule number three are both failing. But now, since the problem itself, the, the problem is programmed, here's the, 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 the good thing about the problem. This problem here with YMAP that I'm using is smart enough to tell between these two rules which one is the, the more, the higher, is at the higher priority. Meaning, of course, if either one re remind, uh, remind yourself what I said earlier about, you know, if either one of the first two rules, rule one and rule number two, fails, then automatically we will have a, we will have rule number three being, uh, will fail as well. And so here, 
in this particular problem, what I'm trying to say now is that even though we have both of these rules are failing, but we need to pick the one that has higher priority. And higher priority means it's the first reasoning that leads to failing a continuity. And so that means among these two, choice in the, that choice in the middle, the limit doesn't exist, is higher priority compared to this. Because uh, this bottom one right here is simply, in, is simply um, a consequence, this bottom rule fails simply as a consequence of uh, this middle rule fails right here. And so in that way, that's how we, we can tell the, the, the correct answer. And so allow me to bring up the, the actual answer for that. And yes, the rule that's being violated here limits exist, but it does not as I proved earlier. And so let's bring ourselves into another one. And let's bring ourselves into a different graph right here. All right, so in a graph like this, and in the same example, we still stay in the same example, example two. Then uh, let's call that for your own, if anyone taking notes, you can go ahead and call this problem example two, but part B. So pretty much the same problem, except for we switch to a different uh, function f of x, and it has a completely different graph. So it's a different function. And so if you look at the list of the, the rules for continuity, this time it's really emphasized what I said earlier about you know, the, 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 good, the usefulness thing about this. The problem is that it purposely wants you to be able to find among all these three rules which one has higher priority and which one is the, the last one in, in terms of priority. And so same goal of the problem. We want to determine which one of the following rules for continuity is violate it at uh, x equals 2. Okay, so your the point that we want to consider here is x equals 2. So now f is being defined or the function exists, I mean lim the limit of the function exists, or the, the three limit, I mean the, the limit equals to the function value at the point, which one of these is being violated? And so now let's bring up the graph a little closer. And uh, I am going to bring up that. Uh, all right. So for example, two part B here. Once again, we want to find out, uh, can we substitute x equals uh, two into the function? And so, x is, if you're looking now at the graph right here, at x equals 2 on the graph, we have a, an empty hole right here, okay? And there's no, right on that vertical line, there's no special uh, other points being placed somewhere. And that means this function value is undefined. So that function value is undefined. And so having that function value being, un, being undefined, now let's look back at the entire graph here in general. All right. So having, having this statement here, this rule being violated because the rule itself is we need f of a is to be defined but now what the violation here is that it's undefined as we just found out so being undefined here is also leads to the function limits won't be equals to the function value at f of a because we won't even have a value here even if we can find some limits and so in that way between these two so once again we run into two re different reasons for two different reasons that our function fails to be continuous, but among the two reasons here, the bottom reason and this reason on the top of our list here, this bottom reason, reasoning is the one that's at higher priority, meaning because we have this rule for continuity fails that will automatically lead to the other rule being failed. And so that's why this one I chose here as my choice is the one at higher priority. And once again, this is how 
warm app is going to agree with that. And, once, and, and also, I'm, I'm sure that if you run into the same problem, the similar problem with WebAssign or the MathML or you know, any other commercial online web assignments, right there, then the, it should be behaving the same way of how the problem is, is giving you the, the correct answer. All right, so that's how we're done with uh, example two, part B. Let's now, let me bring everybody into another problem in the same example two right here. So let's look at the different graph. So the graph we have this time, all right. So here we have a graph. And now I'm once again going to bring up the, the two boards together, my other boards. All right, so the way how my graph looks, then you can see that when x, and we could call this part c of our example right here, but the function value at uh, 2. Ob observing the graph, you can see that we do have a solid point when x equals 2. And that solid point is at uh, the height 2 as well. So here we do have, an, this is our input, and we have a, a successful defined output. So that means our function is defined at uh, x equals 2. And so the rule about uh, f of a is defined, this rule is not violated. So we, you know, among our list of uh, which rule being violated, don't choose this one. This is not the correct choice, you can see. So now, then, if first rule already passed, we have to move on to the next rule. Then let's observe the graph again. So with this graph right here, this time, let's take a look at the limits. And with your experience doing limits by observing graph at this point, when we're approaching to from the left hand side, this graph comes down to a vertical height being one, and from the right hand side, meaning taking limits of the same function, letting x coming close to two, but from the right hand side, that also comes down to one. So limit from the left hand side and limit from the right hand side, they both agree to an overall limit being one. And so that means uh, our function here in particular has an existing limit, the limit for x getting close to this limit point two. From both sides, this is an existing limit being one. So I have to make a note here as an existing finite limit. So in that way, Rule number two is also satisfied, meaning no violation for rule number two. No violation for rule number two. I have to make it clear in that. Okay. So no violation for rule number two. And so in that way, so this rule is not our choice. No violation here, so that rule is not our choice. Let's look at the third rule. So on one map, it's, the third rule is indeed being shuffled and being placed in the the middle of the list, but that's okay. It, it is at this point our responsibility to be able to find out, you know, among all these three rules, which one has the higher priority. And so now the two higher priority rules have all been satisfied. So let's look at the last rule right here. So allow me to erase the board here. So after looking at the requirement number one, function output equals two. But the limit of the function when x was coming close to 2 generally from both sides, that was at limit 1 right here. And so in this case, we can see that limit for our function when x comes to, and I should have, when x comes to 2 equals, actually is not equal to the function output's value at 2. This is one thing that is so clear, nobody can argue about that. And so, so now let me get back completely on the, on the computer screen here. All 
All right, then with our computer screen here, then the correct answer choice at this time is going to be this last one, this middle one, in, this one in the middle. See, the statement says we need, the rule says we need the function limits of the function as x comes to that limit point equals to the function output value at a. But it was a violation in, in our case here. And this is the only violation for among the, all the three rules right there. And so that's how we made our choice that. And that's the, the correct answer. And so now at this point, you have had most of your understanding regarding continuity at a point or for any function. And so now another, uh, another terminology need to, to come ahead for here. I, I, I need to introduce another terminology or, basically, or actually as another definition. So let's have our next definition because Continuity we have learned so far is only continuity at one single point. But a lot of time we generally talk about a function being a continuous function but did not, speci uh, did not specify at which point that is throughout its own domain. And so now let's you know, find, come up with a definition for what it means uh, by being a continuous function, simply a, you know, gen or generally a continuous function anywhere on its domain. And so a function f of x is said to be, and in, in my red ink, said to be continuous. And of course, when we say continuous, we're looking at in its domain, any function, and, and at this point in your learning, you must know what the domain of a function is. And so a function f of x is said to be continuous, of course, in its domain. If f of x is continuous at every x value in the domain of f of x. All right. And so that's simply what it means by having a function generally be continuous. And so now I'm going to, after the, looking at the, this definition, allow me to introduce, uh, bring, allow me to bring this concept of being a generally continuous function. And, and let's find out among all functions we've learned up to this point of your learning in math right here, then which function is regarded as a continuous function and which function is not. So, At this point in your learning in mathematics, you have seen polynomials. All right. And so polynomials, and then you have seen rational function. Or for short, I call them the rationals. Let me readjust my writing for here. Polynomials, rationals. You have seen functions that involve roots. For example, square root, cube root functions. So roots, you have seen trig function. Okay. There are and how about the uh, inverse trick along the way? Inverse trick functions. Okay. They are exponential functions. And uh, they are logarithms. 
function. So this is a reminder of the kind of function we have experienced with throughout uh, ever since your beginning day of learning math up until this point when you are now in calculus. So after we've learned about continuity, then there's a theorem that says, uh, this is now a theorem. It's a truth being guaranteed. The theorem is something that guarantees a truth and being proven. We don't need to see the proof here in, in, in among, uh, along any of these lectures, but in some other supplementary um, videos, then I'm going to have proof for these. But in this theorem, I'm going to say, I'm going to start out by saying any or any one of these, uh, right? any one of these uh, functions. So those are the polynomials, the rationals, the, the roots function, the trig function, and including the inverse tricks the exponential functions and the logarithms right here. All of those functions, families of functions, are, so this is one statement right here, all of these functions or any one of those functions are continuous function right, on its domain. Should have said this is, is continuous on its domain, and that is our definition. I mean, it's a theorem that can guarantee the truth, as seen here. 